more typography tricks for all of you. Today, we're going to take a look at um, another function of envelope distort, which is make with top. We're going to learn a little bit about compound paths and review some of the settings in our typography world. That said, you're going to make a rectangle. I'm going to make it a nice bright color at first. Eventually, our end goal is everything's going to be the same color. And I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to make this one a little bit wider than my last one. And just so you guys can see, I'm going to change my color up a little bit. Do blue. No, I don't like blue. Not for this. Let's do yellow. Goldish color. And I'm going to make a smaller square or rhombus to fit inside of it. I'm going to spin that thing right round. Right round. And I'm going to drag it on over on top. Spin it a little bit more. And use my direct selection tool to make it nice and stretchy, stretchy. I want it to stretchy, stretchy just a little bit. Cool. Into it. So what I'm going to do now to get this kind of floating shape in the middle and to get my two top pieces, I'm going to select my rhombus or parallelogram or whatever it is. I teach art, not math. I'm going to go up to Object, Path, and Offset Path. This has so many different functions, especially in the graphic design world. If you're creating logos, if you want things to have nice borders, I love this function. So I'm going to hit Offset Path. If it is a positive number, it's going to go outside of your path. If it's a negative number, it's going to go inside. So I'm going to switch that and click on and off of preview. And I've got a nice gap here between the two. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to click off of that. I'm going to select my red box and the original shape and pull up my pathfinder again, window pathfinder. And I'm going to minus front. Watch what happens. Isn't that cool? Now we've got a perfect cutout where my diamond is now floating in the middle of my square or rectangle. I guess it's not perfect. Next, I'm going to come in with some type because typography is all about type. And you should have downloaded Big Noodle Titling. Big Noodle, guys. Try to say that with a smile. Big Noodles. Makes me think of lo mein and Chinese food. Um, just for the sake of seeing stuff, I'm going to go ahead and make this black. And I'm going to type typography in all caps. I'm going to make it bare. Whoop! Like so. And just a quick review. I'm not super thrilled about how far apart those letters are. So what I can do is I can adjust the kerning. The kerning is the space, no, I'm a liar. The kerning is the space between two individual letters. So if I had an apostrophe S or something like that, it could go back and do that. I'm going to adjust the tracking. And the tracking is over here. It's got your two letters plus a large arrow. And I'm just going to bump that down a little bit, see how those are jumping closer together. And I feel a little bit better about that. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to turn it into an object. Command Shift O for object, Command G to group them. And I'm actually going to send that behind my stuff. So arrange, send it back. And I'm gonna slide it underneath here. While I can still see it, actually I wanna make sure it's centered. So I'm gonna select both of these, pull up my align palette, window align, and hit my favorite things in the whole wide world. Don't, don't hit that one, just this one. Now it's nice and centered on my stuff. And I'm going to, before I do anything else, ungroup these two. So Command Shift G. Now they're in two pieces, which is what we want. I've selected my top object and my text. I'm gonna go to Object, Envelope Distort, Not Make With Mesh make with top object. And watch what this does. This is really cool. Letters in the shape of my object? It's more likely than you would think. And I'm actually going to do the same darn thing 
underneath here, but notice it fits inside. So we are, once more, with feeling, going to offset the path. So object, path. Offset path. I'm keeping things consistent. You might find a different number works for you. I'm keeping this negative because I want it inside. And I'm going to hit OK. Cool, 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 cool. So now I have a smaller shape inside there. And I'm going to come over to my type tool and type in a ranging type. Because that's what typography is. It's the art of a ranging type. Shock of all shocks, I know. No, you didn't know? Now you know. And I'm going to send this one step backwards. So. One backwards. Maybe one more backwards. Don't want to send it too far back. Just enough that it disappears behind this shape. So while that's still selected, ding dong, I was wrong. While that's still selected, make sure you select your smaller shape, not your larger shape, just your smaller shape. Same rodeo, guys. Object. Path. Nope. Envelope distort. Make with top object. And you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to turn my text into an object. That's problematic. Let's select these, hold the shift button, and click on the ones we don't want selected. Just the text. And I'm going to... Command, Shift, and O. Now it's an object. And I can add my smaller shape. Let's just select it all. Maybe deselect that last shape. And let's try it again. Object, envelope, distort, make with top object. <sighs> hmm, it's upset with me. Now we get to play, why is it upset with me? <sighs> Maybe this needs to go all the way to the back. Yep. Yep, that needs to go all the way to the back, guys. Fun fact. Send it all the way to the back. Arrange. Send to the back. Now that that's there, I keep deselecting it like a ding-dong. Send to back. Command-Shift-O to make it an object. Click on the smaller shape. And together, they become really cool. There we go. That's what we wanted all along. Uh, quick tip, quick tip. We're going to treat this as a compound path. So we're going to make this... Hang on. We're going to minus this out, actually, first. So minus front. Nothing happened because it's not a compound path. Maybe. Or because it's not an object. Or because it's not expanded. Illustrator is a finicky, finicky little program. It likes everything just so. I'm going to hit expand. Hit OK. Now we're going to try to cut that out. Yeah, it worked. And now we're going to make this a compound path. Compound path, make. And this is important to do because it... Um, it lets you do certain things, essentially. It treats all of that as one shape rather than the little inlets of the letters. So I'm actually going to, I can't do it up here because I don't have that other shape. And that, my friends, is how you make a compound path and use envelope distort, make with top object. We're not done yet, though. Stay tuned for part two.